You're listening to Honey, We Made a Disney Podcast. Two friends since first grade, now dads reliving the Disney movies we grew up on with our own kids. I'm Eddie Ferguson. And I'm J.B. Wagner. And on today, we are writing our names in blood as we seal our friendship in a blood pact as we review Tom and Huck. But Eddie, first, how are the fam- how's the family doing? How's everybody doing? So speaking of blood packs, speaking of blood packs, um, we are potty training Lewis right now. And I feel like there is this blood pact with Sarah and I <laughs> of like, we will get through this together oh, of just this is the time. Let's just buckle down and like, wow, we're going to do this. He is going to learn. So I say that. But Sarah is doing like 98% of the work, right? Like, (laughs) I'm there for moral support support and emotional support. support. And I'm there to like swoop in at the end of the day and be like, listen to your mother. Um, But it's going well. I got a wonderful text today. Uh, Apparently, Lewis, um, who's who's very excited about all this process or whatever, I, I don't know, but he um, he he got so excited because um, he's playing da da da, and then was like, "Oh no, he's got to pee!" And he runs up to like go to the bathroom in the little portable potty that we have in the kitchen, and he says to his sister, "He says, watch out, LEJ, I, I have to go pee," and then almost begins to pee on his sister. Oh, no. And Sarah's like, no! And, like, scoops him up and gets him down on the toilet wow. like, just in time before he pees on his little sister, which is just the beginning of constantly... Do you have to go pee? Do you need to go to the bathroom? Yep. You want to go pee? Mm-hmm. A lot of walking around the house with no pants on or... Yes, that's where we're at. And I think that's why he felt just the freedom to pee anywhere, including <laughs> his little sister. We were we were there last quarantine. That was, that was us having to, having to deal with that, that stuff. Last quarantine? Are you currently Like the first quarantine? Quarant- like whatever that was. The, the first one... Then you got the waves, lockdown. lockdown. Like we 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 took advantage of being at home all the time and yeah, used that to potty train now, our son. There was definitely two phases, right? There was like the March to May where it was like I'm watching uh, Outbreak and Contagion. Mm-hmm. Like what's going on in the world? And then you had like the fall when we got sick, and yep. I'm like actually locked down because of that with covid and it's like yeah this is this is i'm done with this we're over um get me out of here yep yeah well that is fun we're all about the life stages here on uh your favorite honey we made a disney podcast (laughs) all about family life stages your your favorite honey we made a disney podcast we're much better than the other honey we made a disney all of the honey podcast. we made we are we are your favorites for sure by far especially by far. on the live stages we got a lot of that going on um so in our last podcast we may have hinted at <laughs> us moving into a new uh year but somehow 1995 still rules on it won't end. it won't die so we are going to do another episode of 1995. Oh, and, gosh. And 1995, if I remember childhood well, was like a full year. I mean, that was second, uh, third grade kind of era for us. Miss Sears, Miss Sears, yeah, third like grade that class. Was, I got glasses that year. You got glasses that I year. I think they were gold because someone drew a picture of me with gold glasses uh and they were round when I got them right? they were round glasses um i bent them and many you were times s- playing soccer you were still uh sporting the uh, bowl cut oh yeah that bowl cut it's still I, I i'm actually just got a haircut today and was thinking about getting another bowl cut <laughs> i was actually about you, shaving my head but what would your teammates do if you walked in oh man 
I can't even imagine the ridicule yeah. that I would get for for wearing a wearing a bowl cut. But anyway, Just so don't don't shave your head, okay? On behalf of all men losing their hair, you are living you vicariously to, through me. Is that what you're if saying? If you have hair, keep wear it. it. If you got it, it's, flaunt it. That's what you're saying. It's going to come to this level of it's the fake gluten free people who are like. I'm gluten free, and then why are you eating that cake? You know, well, it's my cheat day. I hate you. Uh, or the people <laughs> who wear fake glasses with clear lenses through them, and they're like, I just yep. think it's a cool style. Men who have hair who's starting to shave it and go bald, it's rising to that category for me, where it's like, listen, listen, don't. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just that's don't. that's the so you're getting life tips on potty training, Enjoy you're getting hair the tips. Enjoy the follicles. So that's why we're saying that today's episode, we are not going to be going into 1996 quite yet. We still have one more episode and we did our homework and made sure, yes, in fact, our next episode will be going into 1996. Uh, so all of these facts and and great stuff, you're going to have to wait one. We're going to tease it. We're going to you have to wait one more week. Uh, so this that's week, what you really listen to this podcast for all the those facts, things, the yearly facts, the yearly facts once uh-huh. every uh-huh. Once every five months when we get to a new year is when <laughs> there's that. Uh, so we're going to wait that wait till wait till next week for that. Uh, so Eddie, Disney news. What, what do we have to talk about on Disney news before we get into today's uh, real show? So Loki dropped mm-hmm. um, with a new form, um, a new release schedule for yep. uh, Disney. Plus. Threw off They're my wife. Really- it's still throwing her off now. Yeah. Well, I like I even had that thought as I was setting up everything, setting up everything for tonight was like, oh, wait, a new Loki dropped right now because we're recording this on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Like, ah, Um, and I so I haven't watched it yet. But the first episode um, without any spoilers, what was your initial take on it? I think you're going to be sad. Not not because I have a harsh take, but because of what happened. Okay. Eddie, I may or may not, the jury's still out, I may have fallen asleep (gasps) watching this, this, this series, this, this first episode. This episode. Wow. There are many factors happening, some of which are my fault, some of which I don't think were my fault. So can we just pause and talk (laughs) about this for a second? Saturday. (laughs) We're over at my parents' house, and the kids are playing, da-da-da, watching, I don't know. And I just, like, fell asleep in the recliner. Mm-hmm. You're just is resting this, your eyes, Eddie. This is where is we're this at. Is this a serious dad thing now? Oh, it is. It's just like, have, if we sit down, we're just... Have you... And the, you, you know me. That's not me. That's like, not you at all. I don't I'm a little fall, scared like, for you. I don't, I don't take naps. I don't... The last time yeah, I saw you that weird. tired was when you were building a freaking park. <laughs> An entire park ha- w- was forced to take you down. Yes. No. Did, uh, have you? you do you, do you subscribe to Instagram's uh, classic dad moves Instagram no, account? It's no, that's no. what you need. And half of the posts are uh, some uh, crispy white boys. The 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 um the classic New Balance white shoes that mm-hmm. dads wear um it's straight lines on their lawn uh oh it's yeah going to that. home depot at 6 a.m but then it's also a lot of dad just resting their eyes on sunday afternoons they're just just mm-hmm. resting their eyes and i think that's what you were doing is you were just resting your eyes um it was a weird experience because i don't ever do that and that was that was a new one for me so I I, yeah. I say that to say I have a new level of empathy for that. Okay, well that's good. Thank you for that. I I and had, yeah. I'll tell you, I was a little dare I say underwhelmed by the first episode. Just well, to you're be honest. basically in a DMV for the majority of this episode. Not a ton. Not a ton really happens. Aware. The BMV DMV whatever. Yeah, I was whatever say, you call. You called it a DMV and betrayed your Hoosier roots there. Betrayed my BMV. Hoosier, BMV. I, you were getting, it was like you were getting your license. It was, there was, yeah. there was a lot of that. I know that there was things happening, but 
I fell asleep when he was doing some of the looking back on of, his past. A lot, a of, lot of exposition, just setting yep. things up, just setting things up. And I missed, so I, I woke up near the end and then had to finish the to the end and then go back and watch the 15 to 20 minutes that I missed, which was one of the crucial moments with the drawer. We won't say anything more. I missed mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't as powerful for other people that I talked to that were like, oh, that moment, I can't believe he pulled open the drawer and that blah, 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 blah. Right. I, it just wasn't, it wasn't as powerful for me because that, and also I also had one other issue when we first started the, um, when we started watching it somehow, not subtitles, but sub narration had been turned on where it's almost like we were blind and it was narration to tell us what was happening on the oh, screen. Yeah, the audio descriptive. Yeah. Audio descriptive was turned on. And I thought that was part of the bit. <laughs> and so it's like scene opens with cards moving, Marvel logo. Then it was like Master Loki lands in the ground and, or is being in chains 2012. And I thought it was part of the joke. And me and my wife were sitting there looking at each other. It took us like two, a minute and a half. And then we're like, I don't think this is the joke. I think this is something wrong. So we had to play with settings for a little bit, then restarted. I didn't think we restarted. I think we just started right at the cut where it then goes, uh, finishes all the, 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 the previous um. stuff. So we just had a bad intro. And then you're there. And then you're kind of in the DMV for most of the time. And it just... So that's where... I, I mean, granted, it's fairly similar to how I felt about Wanda first time for that first episode where I was just like... What's going? Although that one was more just like, what's going on? Why am I here? This was more just like I'm waiting for something to happen. So, yeah, at least one division just kind of captured my attention. It was like, oh, this is intriguing. This is interesting how they're doing this, and then that. Mm-hmm. Um, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier just like launched, launched, right? launches you that, yeah. that that sequence with him flying through the air and the helicopters. Um, so yeah, I was just I was I was underwhelmed. And in part, again, we've talked about this a lot. Um, maybe I had just too high of expectations. Like when the three series were announced, this yep. was the one where I'm like, ooh, that sounds really cool. Um, so maybe it's just too high of expectations. So I'm eager to see the second episode. Um, I was listening to a podcast on my drive today where they were speaking that the second episode really kind of helps take it, take it up. And it's only six episodes. This entire yeah. season is only going to be six episodes. So you got to get it. They got to, they got to pick it up soon. Is this going to be seasons? Like there's going to be multiples. I don't know. I haven't gone that far. Cause I know like WandaVision and Falcon and winter soldier were just one offs. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, so who knows? Maybe this is just what they're doing. They're doing one-off series. I would think they would want to do something that was like get the fans in, kind of like Mandalorian, and we've got seasons of it. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to each his own. To each his own. But well, I right after we get off this, I'm going to go watch the next episode. So because we also have not seen the second one yet either. So I am on the Eastern Time Zone, so I don't know if we will still. You will be, be asleep uh, again. You'll be yeah. asleep sitting in this podcast chair right there. <laughs> but that is here nor there we are what you're really here for is uh the next episode in our series as we march from 1988 to 2005 all of the disney movie major disney movies that came out during our childhood and today we are reuniting with our friend jtt once more a, a third a thrice time uh this is on the, the jtt uh trio or C, uh trilogy or whatever it is but today is um the movie from 1995 tom and huck cue the disney sound effect okay so imdb description for this uh movie okay two best friends witness a murder and embark on a series of adventures in order to prove the innocence of the man wrongly accused of the crime. That's pretty good. That's one of our better ones. I'm not going to lie. It's got momentum. You get the best friends in there, the murder and adventures. Man, this is is a roller coaster. This is an emotional roller coaster, Eddie. 
So we always be like to begin. <laughs> uh, had you seen this before? Was this um, staple in your home when you were growing up? This is a hard one. Um, had I seen this before? Yes. Yep. Was it a staple? I don't think so. But the book, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. The real book. Not this. The not, real not book. The, not, not this, but just like the real thing. That most certainly was. Um, yes, because my family is from Missouri on the Mississippi River just down this from was Eddie, This was the Ferguson's going home. Yeah, so I mean, I remember even as a young kid first reading this and visiting Hannibal where all this takes place um, and a lot of the things that kind of happen I've been oh, to all of been those there. places yeah I've been to the cave I've been to um, the whitewashing fence that they've got there in the middle of Hannibal um, and I mean I grew up this is a big tourist attraction like yeah now it is now it is Okay. But Hannibal and Hannibal is Mark Twain's hometown as well. Gotcha. So he set he set the story in his hometown. So there's kind of a crossover. So it's not an homage to Hannibal Lecter or anything like that. No, not at all. <laughs> this this predated that considerably. Did, am, am I correct in saying that you own a copy of Tom Sawyer's or not Tom Sawyer's, but um, Mark Twain's biography, like that massive tome that came out? recently like um, a decade ago was that, I, was it 2011 i do i did own the first volume of his autobiography um and i i think i actually sold it off in the process of moving um i didn't enjoy it as much as i thought i was going to so for those of you this who don't movie know or the or the or the or the autobiography the autobiography <laughs> Um, it is massive, right? So, yep. I mean, it is like didn't two he like Harry hide Potter it? books. Like, it didn't yes. come out for decades or a hundred years. So, he years. wrote he wrote two volumes, and they are a non-linear autobiography of his life. Um, she just wrote and, stuff. And he sealed it, and he had to, and like his will said, it uh, couldn't be released until like the hundredth anniversary of his death. Wow. I think it was. Um, and so when it was finally released, like the, it was highly anticipated and, and very, everybody was all excited for it. Um, and I just had a hard time following it because it is a nonlinear autobiography. Um, his writing style, I love, like I've read a lot of Twain. I still have kind of the classic Twain novels on my bookshelf. Yep. Um, but yeah. And, and Tom Hanks. Uh, Tom Hanks. Did I Tom say Hanks. Tom Hanks? Tom Sawyer. I mean, Tom Same Sawyer thing. is the classic, like, American novel. Like, you've got Tom Sawyer, To Kill a Mockingbird, um, Great Gatsby. I don't know what else you would put in there, like, of you Mice and Men. You said all the ones that I know. Of Mice and Men, of Steinbeck, like from you know the american novel like man those are those are your classics but many have not read since high school yeah me either i i I think i've read all of those i've just not um read them since high school yeah so um this was interesting i the movie they definitely try and play up a little bit more of the um, the two characters, kind of the two yep. best friends, mm -hmm. where I think the book is much more centered on Tom Sawyer. And you feel that, right? Even in yep. the course of the movie, um, this is definitely JTT's movie. This is movies about Tom. Um, but I understand why they call it Tom and Huck, right? It kind of just makes it feel a little more 90s and um, yes. yeah, accessible. No, this this definitely um, because this is basically the follow up to um, Huck Finn. It's pretty incredible how different these two movies are. I think maybe they saw because that that was that Huck Finn was so serious. There were so many uh, really dark themes that they explored in that with Elijah Wood as the as playing Huck, Huck Finn. 
uh, found out that Huck Finn, that uh, Elijah Wood was supposed to do was good. What they wanted to get him to be in this as Huck Finn, but instead he was filming another movie and he couldn't, he couldn't do both of them at the same time. So ah. it was supposed to be a direct, but it's funny because this movie is, this is way more nineties film, way more nineties style like from the very beginning, the energy is a lot, a lot peppier throughout. Like it keeps you going. Um, there's a lot of kind of nineties as kind of looks and tropes and stuff like that, even though it's a period piece. It didn't, it doesn't totally feel like a period. It's a nineties period piece. Um, I don't know what the right answer to that of like how you can tell, but like, you're just like, it's they kind of play a little bit loose with like the time period and stuff like that. And some of the, the, ter- the language and the, the, yeah, the things they said to each other, like, that's probably not that what they were saying to each other back in those days. 1880s. I felt like, yeah, yeah, exactly. I felt like Huck Finn was much more true to the time they tried to be, at least. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I, I feel bad saying this, but, like, I enjoyed watching this more than I did Huck, Huck, Huck Finn. Huck Finn was hard to get through, and this, even though it was, it was kind of, it's not a good film, it was kind of dumb... But I enjoyed watching it more. I wasn't like dying the entire way through, <laughs> but maybe that's just because I'm, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, I think I'm there with you. Um, and your description, I'm i am trying to figure out how to like, um, I don't know, flush that out a little bit where like Huck, the adventures of Huckleberry Finn, I felt like they were trying to be m- like a direct adaptation of the yes. book. And, and I think in many ways in doing so, they lost the spirit of the book. Um, and it came across more of like a PBS masterclass special. <laughs> um, and it, it's yeah. probably, and then you've got Tom and Huck where I felt like it captured the, the boyhood adventure. Yeah that I always loved about the book, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Okay. And so, and like rewatching this movie now, it's obviously takes some liberties and it's different than the book. It took more liberties, yeah. But I also enjoyed it more because I think it, and I think it captured more the spirit. Like it made me remember things about the book, like why those stories and, all of Twain's novels and short stories have always just been something that I've enjoyed that sense of just boyhood adventure. Um, it captures that a little bit better, that kind of essence. Um, you know, in many ways it's almost like, um, uh, like the BBC version of pride and prejudice versus the Kiera Knightley one. I really love the (laughs) Kiera Knightley one. I don't think I don't know that I want to put Tom and Huck anywhere near. No, the no, 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 the no, 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 not at all. This they they made this more more. But you commercial. know that comparison. You know yeah. what I mean? That like comparison. This like, was this was much more commercial. Yeah, exactly. And honestly, as weird as it sounds, because I was not. I think even uh, the week before I or two weeks before I was like, let's let's do. Um, our recap of game changer because i'm not ready to get back into another jonathan jtt movie i felt better about him in this film than yes. he was in the previous Any one the others. In, in in especially the last one we watched he was so <laughs> annoying as that as that as the as the um the stepson or whatever he was so annoying and sad and mad and whatever this he had more fun with it. I felt like he actually he liked being on set and liked to be like even doing this film, uh, even with that weird haircut that he had the whole the whole time. Speaking of bowl cut, um, that thing Very was so. a masterpiece, was a masterclass in, in hair. Um, but I felt better about him in this in this film. Still not amazing, but you know what? Uh, we get some Rachel Lee Cook in here, uh, some early Rachel Lee Cook. Um, as his uh, love interest throughout the throughout the movie, pushing him over on the on the bridge, and they get the playful back and forth, the banter and stuff like that, um, which kind of like adds some more fun to it. So, yeah, I found myself not looking forward to watching this. Like when I saw that it was on our list, I was like, "Oh, do I?" Uh, and then when I started watching it, like I 
kept going. Like I was like, yep. oh, okay, yeah, this is fun. Like it, it, it does hold hold my it, it held my attention well. Um, and I think in part is because I do think that the the acting was a little bit better there. Like it was not cringe worthy. Where I think some of the others are just like, ugh, 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 I can't stand this. We know. We know, Eddie. We all know that you love a good hideout, a good like, like fortress, kind of like fort, like playground, whatever it is. And this had a good one in that little cave thingy that they were in. No, they had the cave. They have the yeah, the haunted house that they're hiding out in. Yep. Um, yeah, this just. Well, you got you've got Huck's little little man man right, spot yeah. like right there. It's not really a cave because there's no roof on it anywhere. He's got his he got his lookout perch up top. He's got his throne. His bluffs. He's got all the all the all the things that you love in uh in one of those little places. So little hidey hole. No, I think uh I was constantly reenacting Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn <laughs> as a kid. Like just finding like little things under bushes and like finding making like little forts and building contraptions and stuff like that. I think that's why these stories just always captured my imagination so much because it was young boys setting out on their own, having like crazy adventures. Yep. Um, and that just, I don't know, that sparked something in my imagination. And so going back and watching this had a very similar, you know, um, I don't know. It sparked those memories, not so much the memories of the movie itself, but the story and what that story represented for my childhood. When you have two really iconic moments that um, I remembered even while we were going through this, one of which is obviously what you alluded to before, the whitewashing yeah. um, of the fence, um, that whole sequence where he tricks the other kids into whitewashing the fence for him. Um, that's just a, a very famous uh, moment from uh, from our friend Mark Twain. Uh, but then you've also got the, when he's at his own funeral. Yes. I love when he's yeah. at his own, because that's something you even t- think about. Like if I was at my own funeral, like what would I, what would people say about me? What would the real story be? And then he's like watching it happen. Then he falls through the roof. Like you just kind of remember those fun, um, iconic moments, um, which is more even due to Mark Twain than it is to these directors, but they had fun with it at least. Yeah, do you, um, so we'll do some more sidetrack here on my Mark Twain. Do you know Mark Twain's real name? I know it, and I can't remember it off the top of my so head. So it's Samuel Clements That's right. is his real name, and he got his uh, pseudonym because that's what you, there was a job on the riverboat in the Mississippi that you would have this twain or twine of rope yep. that had marks all the way down it by the depth. Yep. And so there was a little boy's job to stand at the front of the boat and throw this rope over that had a rock at the bottom and wait for it to hit the bottom of the river and then check it and see how many marks there was. And whenever it was time for the captain to need to know, he would yell, Mark Twain. Yeah. And so that little boy's job was to throw that out. That was Samuel Clement's job when he was a little boy, is he would stand at the front of the boat and Mark Twain. And so that's why he took on the pseudonym of Mark Twain. Also interesting fact, if you want to plan some summer road trips in the great state of Missouri, Hannibal, Missouri, Mark Twain's hometown and where Tom Sawyer is set, is only an hour and a half down the road from... Marceline, Missouri, the hometown of Walt Disney. Yep. And you can see the original Main Street USA that the Disneyland Main Street is based off of. And it wasn't where he was born. It was where just grew one, it was one, one of the places he lived growing up that had the most impact on him. And he took, he, the, yes, I'm yep. going to take this. I think he ended up having to leave there because his family was trying to find work or something. But yeah. He was born in Chicago and yep. grew up in Marceline and then started his young adult Saint life Lewis in Kansas City. Kansas City, that's right. Yep. 
Yeah, I'm actually and looking then, right uh, now. I'm I might pull that down. The Disney biography that's over here. Um, uh, yeah. So the there's many other fun things we talked about locations. Uh, another one is that little island that they're on. Although I'm still trying to figure out why they needed to kick themselves in mud. Is still kind of crazy. Camouflage, camouflage. It's camouflage, but I love it's that really moment poor when uh, yeah. and Joe wakes up and kind Whoa, of and he's drunk and drunk stupor, stupor, and he looks right across and doesn't see him. Well, and then he uses that against them as he like kind of hides in the form of the cave and then comes after yeah. him. But yeah, let's talk about Engine Joe. First off, the name Engine Joe is one of the very first things they would cut in a remake For of sure. this in 2021. That let's just be honest that's not they would never ever probably wouldn't even have the character but they'd probably do something else but definitely not call him engine joe yeah and i've you know in the adventures of tom sawyer this is why some people have a hard time even still um requiring it for reading because that's in there the n-word is in there um others you know um horrible ways of calling people or in yep. there. Mm-hmm. But that's also one of the reasons why Tom Sawyer was such a, it is a, an American novel is he was the first to phonetically dictate a, a local dialect. If you remember mm. reading that as a kid, like they try and capture the, the Missouri accent as best as you can. Yep. But, um, yeah. Engine Joe is a great villain. I do think it is a good villain because it's not. He's very menacing. Very menacing, but also not like too smart, like not too conniving. It's pretty straightforward. He's just going to throw a knife. You know, he's going to pop out of We don't get any backstory about, about why he's so mean or, no. or that he was really raised by wolves or something like that or something they pull at your heartstrings. No, they just make him a pretty black and white He's yeah. a bad guy. Yeah. Um, which is which is good. It makes it fun. It just kind of highlights the overall quest and adventure. I mean, this story has a little bit of everything, right? Like you've got treasure hunt, you've yep. got a murder mystery, yep. you've got uh um, Young Love. In, young Love Adventure. Buddy, buddy, buddy comedy. Save a guy's road life. Trip, road trip heroic, film. Yeah uh raft trip road trip yeah um yeah it's just got a lot of different elements to it that that's fun your courtroom scene you got courtroom drama that is such a fun scene right where it's like a taste well you've got the two right where they um oh and the guy's blinking my the 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 guy that they blame it on at first like they're about to like hang him he's, and he's so sad looking it's so yeah, pitiful looking at yeah. him yeah they're about to hang him right there at the crime scene. And then you think, wow, this is really how society used to be. And we're not too far away from that. Even now, like we openly judge, uh, execute, like carry out judgment in a flash in mob setting. We just do it online now. Now it's just Facebook. Well, and there, I, I love the little girls that are like dancing through and there's gonna be a hanging, yeah, a yeah. hanging, hang. <laughs> But even when they get into the courtroom, like we've just got like random people standing up saying things. Um, it reminds, got, me, like, reminds me a lot of uh, Parks and Rec every time that they yes. have a forum. People just yelling the most random stuff. They don't even know why they're there. And you, I think, Eddie, you have experience in real I life. I have with experience because in my, yes, I won't go go there. I've sat in on <laughs> many a forum, many, many a town. citizen, citizens forum. I have done my civic duty to serve <laughs> the community of Brownsburg. And I have sat through some. My favorite is the the one meeting where we had the the contingency of people advocating for pickleball courts. And they all showed up with matching pickleball court T-shirts Wow. And at every, you know, voice moments, somebody raised, well, we just want to know, when are you going to build more pickleball courts? Yeah, yeah, pickleball, pickleball courts. Well, we're talking about aerobic programs right now. So, <laughs> you know, 
what do you, you know? What are your thoughts about building an aquatic center? We want to know when you're going to build more pickleball courts. Yeah, pickleball courts, pickleball. So yes, this is. And I'm now I'm wondering, really Eddie, tell me, tell us all, when are the pickleball courts coming? They opened this past spring, Stevens Park. It's beautiful. They've got six. Are they there? Were, were all the people there with their t-shirts? I don't know. I sure hope they went there because they were they were pretty obnoxious about it. Hey, all. there's a lovely playground right off to the side and outdoor ex- exercise equipment that you set your phone and the Bluetooth talks to the outdoor bike or uh, elliptical machine. Wow. And you can see like how fast you're going and everything just through Bluetooth on your phone. Wow. Stevens Parks, Brownsburg, Indiana. You're missing out. Oh goodness. We also uh there's <laughs> going coming back coming back yeah, coming back to the film. Uh we we forgot a couple other cool moments. Uh in uh Engine Joe jumping through the blo- broken plate glass window as he's running for his running away because he's outed himself as the the bad guy or as the as the guy that's really to blame. Um we have um uh the whole the whole the whole cave in and everything happening in there with um, JTT and, the and Rachel D. Cook looking for the treasure, but then the treasure gets lost in the end, but it didn't. So there was a switcheroo at the end. Like, no. I and then the, the whole ending scene with, with him deciding to take off his, his, uh, his nice clothes and just run away. To Huck Finn's hideout. To Huck Finn's hideout. Where he is sitting there in his really new And Huck Finn clothes. has... Turn has turned coat. He's turned coat. Yeah. Literally, he's turned in and got a coat now. <laughs> so now he's wearing that. I I got to tell you, like I got to the end of this and I thought, you know what? When Lewis won, I want him to read the books first. But I do think this would be the one books where were I would, way better than the movie. <laughs> they're just different. But yes, um, they're better. But no, like I could see uh, if he was a little bit older, actually sitting down and, and watching this with him. Yep. I any anything else that pops up on on the top of your head? You're thinking about this film, about this experience we just had. Is there um, was there any other notable actors or characters in this? Like the one lawyer seemed really familiar to me, but I yeah. couldn't track it down. Yeah, he's been in several things. The name is uh, Charles Rocket. It was Judge Thatcher. Yeah, he's been in several other things. He was in um, Dumb and Dumber, Dances with Wolves, Titan AE. He's been in several other things, but um, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, no, he was the only other like name actor that I could kind of like could tell kind of stood out. Um, and there's other people in there that you're like, I think I've seen him before. Really, it's Rachel Lee Cook and Jonathan Taylor Thomas. I don't even know that Brad Renfro, the who played Huck Finn, has done that much else. No. But yep, yep. Are we ready to rate this thing? Yeah. So what do you what do you you want to go for? Me, you want you me, go for it? Me, 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 me go for it. I'm, just, I'm, just, you I'm still debating. I'm, I'm going to give this um, a solid three. Okay. Okay. Uh, I I might be convinced of a 2.5, but um, I don't think it was like a super strong film, like amazing, going to blow no. me away. Yeah. But like I said earlier, I could see myself coming back and watching this again with, with the kids. I'm going to give it a two. I think it's a fine movie to have on in the background while you're doing other things. I'm not like fully invested, but there's enough things going on that I occasionally kind of look up and I kind of was doing that. I was kind of doing 1995 re- 1996 research <laughs> while this was going on. I was just like, Oh, that's kind of interesting. Let me be engaged for a little bit. Go back to what I was doing. This is a TNT film. This is a TNT film. It's like, you got to have it on just to have something, something sure. else. So that's why I'm going to give it a two. Um, also, because it's better. I enjoyed this experience more than I did um, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, and I'm 100% sure I gave that a one. So I got to give it bigger than that. This is a TNT film. Is that a outdated term now with like all the cord cutting and cable cutting? 
I mean, somebody has to have TNT still. But, but like, for the as kids, soon as you the, say that, like, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. And that's where I haven't come up with a better... Just clicking through. I, there's I mean, not, we there's do that another one. when we stay in a hotel, like, you just kind of click through and see what's on. And then often it's like, oh, that movie's playing on TNT. Sure. Yeah. And you're like unpacking, you know, getting the kids baths and stuff like that. And you just got a movie playing in there. That's what I'm talking about. We get it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. So that's it for today's episode. Uh, as our last film, we are f- really 99%, 100% sure is our last film in 1995. Uh, so next week, we will give you all of the um, info on what happened as we revisit 1996, um, especially because I'm excited about this. We're going to be looking at one of my wife's favorite films, which is Muppet Treasure Island. Eddie, are you excited about next week's? We've got cabin fever. We've, We've got, got cabin, cabin fever. fever. Yes. I will go out there to say this is my my favorite Muppet movie. Well, there you go. That's the teaser for next week is Eddie's favorite Muppet movie. But for this week, thanks for listening. <laughs>